keys to financial security in an uncertain future. Saving, spending, and silver. Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching Yankee Stacking. So today I wanna to talk to you about uh, keys to financial security in an uncertain future. I'm gonna focus on three areas specifically, saving, spending, and silver or precious metal, silver and gold. Um, and you know, these are rather basic concepts, but I think it's really important for us to sometimes reflect or at least take uh, stock at where we're at and uh, determine whether we need to uh, do a little uh, cleanup work <laughs> in one or more of these areas. So let's take the first one, savings. <laughs> My uh, son, Little Stacks, who just got a job, he's starting uh, Tuesday, um, July 7th, really excited. He's going to be a part of the workforce. He's going to uh, get a paycheck. He's going to find out what FICA is. Uh, <laughs> he's in for quite the education, working for someone. And I think this is going to be the beginning of a, an incredible uh, journey of, of earning money. He's really blessed to be able to even have a job during the times that we live in. And he, he asked me, he said, Dad, um, am I going to be able to like spend the money that I make at, at this job? <laughs> Perfect segue for Yankee to step right in there and uh, kind of uh, do a, a dad thing and explain to him that this was going to be the time where he learns, you know, how to handle his money. I said, there are you know, some things you're going to need to do, one of which, and I don't necessarily go over this much in this video, but basically I said, you need to be a giving person right from the beginning. You need to set aside some money that you are going to give. That is not uh, savings or spending or anything else. It's, it's giving to others. That's important. But there's some other things you need to do. You need to save money currency. <laughs> what you get from your employer uh, can't just all be spent. All right, You need to set aside savings. The next thing is you need to spend. Well, you don't need to, but you should actually learn how to spend uh, your money. It's a, a valuable life skill. And there's some factors that, that go into that. And uh, the last thing uh, I don't know if it really applies to uh, Little Stacks at this point. Um, it may be under the savings headings. We're going to talk a little bit more about it. But if you're watching this video and you're a stacker, uh, you probably know what the third thing is I'm going to talk about, and that is silver. Okay, so let's let's start with the very first thing, savings. The ancient and honorable idea of saving money is on its deathbed. It's dying and almost completely dead. And we have to learn how to adapt when it comes to savings. It's, it really is a cultural thing, especially, you know, in the U.S. and in Europe. Uh, you know, savings goes back uh, in part of the fabric of our societies. I mean, my own parents uh, coming out of the Depression, you know, they, they learned you know, a penny saved is a penny earned, uh, uh, saving for a rainy day, uh, creating a slush fund, uh, you know, a reserve fund. My, my mom used to, to teach me back when I got my first job how to budget my money and where savings was. And you need to have uh, uh, some savings here, Yankee. Uh, you know, this is important. You have to have something for you know, when things go wrong, when things break, and you got to buy something. You, shoot, you could lose your job. You have to have some savings. So that's important to have that life skill early on as children. Right now, savings, like I said, is dying. And a large part of the reason why, uh, it's because of the Federal Reserve. Our central banks have dropped interest rates to essentially zero. I mean, think about it. What are you making in the uh, public bank? Not much, right? It's not even worth having that money in the bank unless there's some, you know, for convenience sake, like paying bills, direct deposit, ATMs. Other than that, 
you shouldn't have your savings in a public bank. I say this a lot. I tell people to be the bank, to take their savings out of the public bank where they're not really making anything and make a private bank at home and have that money close to at hand, something that you can get a hold of quickly. So, you know, in Europe, um, the situation's really dire there. With, with uh, the negative interest rates that they have, they're, they're passing that on to depositors now. That means that if you have a, you know, a large deposit at the bank, it can start to shrink all by itself just sitting there. That, that is such a stupid concept. But the U.S., you know, we're in the same boat when it comes to real rates. Think about it. The inflation rate, you know, is around 2.1, at least by official numbers anyways. So 2.1%. And, you know, the Fed funds rate is now down to, I think it's 0.25, basically next to zero. And our 10-year government bond is giving a big whopping 0.68%. So, nominally you're making much less than 1%, you know, for the privilege of, you know, locking up your money for 10 years, but the real interest rates are negative. You're losing money to inflation year after year after year. You know, the we function in a dollar denominated world. You you can't spend, you know, silver and in in gold on goods and services very effectively. So it you need liquidity. You need cash. Cash is still king, even though it's slowly losing its value. So my uh, uh, medicine, if you will, Yankee's medicine, is to save a quarter of everything you take in. That's what I think is a great goal to have. You know, again, be the bank, bring it out of the public bank, make your own private bank, and yes, the dollar will continue to erode, but you know, having savings, even in currency, still beats living hand to mouth and not having any. So that's what I'm telling Little Stacks. He has to save a certain amount of uh, cash every paycheck. You know, you say, okay, Yankee, th- this sounds very easy. Dude, you have no idea my financial situation. You. I am in debt up to my ears. I can't save anything. It comes in, it goes out. There is no slush. There is no margin. There's nothing I can put away. You know, if that if that's the case, seriously, you and I need to talk. All right. I've helped many people find a way to start saving. Even if it was just one dollar a day. A lot of the times people don't realize where their expenses are going but when they actually do it sometimes takes some tough choices to begin building some savings but it can be done and it needs to be done so again i'm trying to teach my son little stacks how to save so that's number one number two is how to spend now you would think Yankee, come on. I mean, that's <laughs> that comes naturally for me, right? <laughs> I see something I want it, I spend it, and I get it. You know, it's spending, right? Well, let me just step back a minute here. I'm I'm 54 years old, right? I've witnessed the uh, dawn of credit card and debit cards. I saw the first ATM. Uh, I saw PayPal and Apple Pay. Now I'm seeing things like, you know, Amazon's hand scanning technology and all that cool tech. But with all that technological advances and all the ways that we can easily and conveniently spend, I've watched as the U.S. has spiraled into obscene debt and living way beyond our means. You know, I, I've experienced a sea change in American culture from saving to just spending. Payday loans, revolving debt, these were like foreign to me when I was growing up. I know I was blessed to have that be the case, but, you know, it wasn't that way for Mrs. Yankee, by the way. But for me, it really was. It was completely foreign. In fact, let me tell you a quick story. I grew up in a, a, a single income, a middle-class home. My dad was educated, but he didn't make a lot of money. You know, our earliest vacations as a family were like, you know, a, a pop-up tent. <laughs> you know, it was, 
really all we could afford. But it was great memories. And, you know, later on, we were able to save money, you know, maybe a couple of years or whatever in save. And we would take a road trip. We went to, you know, various national parks or, or amusement parks. I, we went to Disney World one year. That was amazing. So when I went to college, you know, I had this mindset. And I remember having a friend uh, who was going to Europe in the summer. He was all excited. And it was like, wow. You're going to Europe? He said, yep. I'm going to go to, you know, England and Ireland, and then I'm going to go to Paris and all that. It's like, whoa, that's incredible. <laughs> I said, that must have taken you forever to save up for. <laughs> he looked at me like I was, you know, out of my mind, like I had three heads. He went, what? What are you talking about? That's what a credit card is for, dummy. You know, our credit markets have kneecapped our nation. They have destroyed us. They've destroyed the whole concept of delayed gratification. And I think the credit markets are going to burst. I think we are seeing the perfect storm of stupidity with the credit markets. And I think at some point, all of that is going to come crumbling down. We need to save and we need to spend wisely. So that's my Yankee medicine, if you will, for spending. Spend wisely. Live below your means. That means that just because you get a raise, and it's interesting, I, I, I've seen my children get raises you know in their their jobs my oldest who's now married he, she's going to get a promotion soon and that means a raise and i counsel them not to raise their standard of living with every paycheck increase okay create some margin hold back say this is good now we can save more you know that might mean that you need to put on a fiscal blinders okay so you don't look at the neighbor or your friend and see what they have and go into debt to get it. You know, you need to resist. I, I need to resist the urge. I'm saying this to myself too, right? I need to resist the urge to spend significant cash on something or, or, or to hand over my credit card until after I've slept on that decision, after I've discussed it with someone that I trust. In my case, Mrs. Yankee, she does a great job of, of helping me do the right thing. But a friend, someone that you trust, someone who is fiscally responsible that you may know, as rare as that might be, ask them whether they think of this larger purchase. Not every purchase, maybe for a buck or two, you can get the, you know, vending machine, you'll have to freak out and say, oh no, should I do this or not? Or maybe, depending on your circumstance, that uh, vending machine purchase might be too much. I don't know. So, um, and last, you know, really think about what the financial effects will be of that purchase. You have to spend your money wisely. And so, you know, that, that those are the first things. So, savings, spending, and the last thing I call silver. Maybe because I love alliterations, but hey. Whatever, right? Silver or gold, right here. Now, some people look at this as an investment, and investing is very important. You know, sometimes people uh, uh, feel like they have to invest. Obviously, they can't just put everything in cash because it will slowly, like I said, erode. So you have to put it somewhere, right? So it will protect itself the, uh, from the loss of value. Um, and sometimes people invest in wise and unwise ways. So way I look at um, silver and gold is less of, a, of an investment, at least in a traditional sense, and more of insurance. You need insurance in a variety of ways, whether it be car insurance, life insurance, health insurance, you know, fire insurance, whatever insurance you feel that's necessary. This to me is wealth preservation and, and inflation insurance. Okay, So silver and gold helps preserve or save your wealth uh, without spending, because in a way, this is really just converting one type of of monetary uh, asset, if you will, like fiat 
currency to real money. You're converting it from one to the other. So in a sense, it is saving, if you will, savings, but it's also to some an investment. So savings, investing, silver and gold are very important to have as part of your financial security. Um, sometimes people get ahead of themselves when it comes to uh, precious metals. I've helped some people directly, even in our community, uh, through um, the Yankee Canyon membership, to really assess whether or not they're ready to stack in a big way. Now, it doesn't mean you just can't buy a, a nice silver round occasionally, but if you're really getting into this whole hog, if you're going to really put a lot of emphasis into stacking, you need to make sure that other uh, fiscal necessities are in order that your debt has been reduced, okay? Especially that nasty credit card, double digit revolving debt. That's gotta be dealt with first, it really does. And buying this stuff, you know, yes, if you're careful and you have good control with credit cards, you can use a credit card, maybe even get some cash back as long as you can pay that balance off. So again, how you stack is very important for your fiscal health. You know, the final thing I wanted to say is uh, there's a, a um, former preacher by the name of John Wesley who had a sermon entitled The Use of Money. Hmm. He said these words, and I'll leave you with this. Earn all you can, save all you can, give all you can. Hmm. Words of wisdom. Thank you so much for watching Yankee Stacking. I hope this little uh, silver and gold and saving and spending video was helpful to you. If you're interested in uh, my membership, especially the Yankee Cannon, check out the link in the description below. I would love to be able to spend a couple hours with you talking to you about your, uh, your fiscal situation, investment strategies, how to preserve your wealth, stacking and prepping. Let me know and leave a comment down below. I'd really like to hear what you have to say about this video. So thanks again for watching. I hope your day is a-okay.